What's up YouTube? We have our renowned guest Dr. Prachi Gajjar with us. She has done her post graduation here in India, completed her MD dermatology here in India and after that she pursued the USMLE pathway and she is here to guide us about how to pursue USMLE after you have done your post graduation from India. Dr. Prachi Gajjar, thank you so much for coming in here and giving me an opportunity to host you. Please tell us about yourself. Hi, first of all, hi Apurva, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to come into a YouTube channel and I would like to tell everyone that he is the one who was with us during our journey starting from USMLE step 1, 2 and 3 up to the entire match process. So thank you for always supporting and motivating me and my spouse Dr. Parth. So yeah, about myself, uh, I am a dermatologist practicing in Bhavnagar, small town in Gujarat, uh, along with my husband, who is an ophthalmologist. And we pursued USMLE immediately after our PG. And right now we are waiting for our match results next week. Hope for the best. And I'm sure um, you guys have applied for the couples match. And that's fingers crossed. Yeah. Ruben. yeah. So Thank you said you. like... Perfect. Uh, so you said like you have done your post-graduation in India. So what motivated you to pursue USMLE after post-graduation here in India? Yeah, so of course I'm, I'm being asked this everywhere. So I would right. like to say that uh, I have seen healthcare system in India. Mm -hmm. So somewhere I felt that I wanted to be in one of the world's best healthcare system. And even while in India, everywhere in MBBS and my PG, we were learning standard protocols which were framed in United States. Right. So I thought that why not to be in that healthcare system, which is practiced everywhere in the entire world. And so I researched that how can I get into that healthcare system? Right. So I got to know about USMLE and decided to uh, do that. That's Just awesome. This, my yeah. <laughs> this, this also perfectly resonates with me as I used to think that we are reading the Harrison and they are the one who are writing the Harrison. Exactly. So I just wanted to experience that kind of healthcare system. Yeah. So, so what advice would you give to someone who has done post-graduation here in India and now wants to go to USMLE pathway? Uh, I would like to say it needs a, a lot of courage and dedication to decide uh, USMLE after post-graduation in India. Right. Uh, so like th to make decision, you are almost more than halfway done in that pathway. Right. It's, it was really tough to make that decision. But after you decide, I think you should give 100% and not listen to anyone, be it your friend, relative, or other colleagues, because everyone will question you after your post-graduation in India, that why you want to change the country suddenly. But it's doable, it is possible, and it is worth doing. That's so inspiring. Yeah. Um, so if somebody is getting already admission in NEET PG, like for example here, in, and they have scored a good marks, but ultimately, let's say they want to pursue USMLE after that. So what should they do? Uh, yeah, so I myself faced the same problem because mm -hmm. in my uh, medical school, I was getting admission even without any entrance test with my merit score. Right. So I, I fell into that trap and I did my post-graduation in India. But mm -hmm. I would suggest if you see long-term USMLE and you, uh, working in US healthcare system is far more better for you, your family, and you'll get one of the best work atmosphere, which I think it's not possible to get uh, in this country, I think. So That's you correct. should definitely work in the, in this pathway of USMLE and it looks longer, but ultimately if you uh, look at the other way, it, mm -hmm. it's not that long because even in India to uh, establish private practice, it may take around a decade. Right. Ultimately, USML is a shortcut, I would say. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> yeah. I, I personally have faced this question often that I want to pursue here uh, post-graduation so that I get mm -hmm. some money and earn some money and mm -hmm. then I could spend some money on USMLE mm -hmm. pathway. Is that approach correct or you should just directly jump to USMLE? Uh, so again, I would like to say that private practice in India, it requires crores of money. Right. Any branch, like my branch, dermatology, my spouse branch, ophthalmology, it requires two to three crores so mm -hmm. compared to that i think usml is just one fourth of it so it's right. cheaper and i would like to say check out dr apurva's previous video how <laughs> did he make uh, his first 50 lakhs it's not impossible it's definitely doable and awesome. So go for it. awesome so how would you summarize usml versus neat yes yeah, so i did not work hard for neat as i said mm -hmm. i got admission based on my merit but need is all about facts. You have to cram everything. 
mm-hmm. uh, be it anatomy or some numericals and everything. But USMLE pathway, I did not cram any numbers. I did not cram any attachments or any muscles or nothing. So I found it easy. And even I did not uh, cram any dose of any drugs. Phar- pharmacology. Right. It was uh, like wreck for me during my MBBS pharmacology and anatomy. So these right. all is skipped in USMLE pathway. So it's definitely easier. <laughs> Awesome. That's more of a clinical anatomy rather than just a cross. Exactly. What do you have to say about those who have specialized in some branches here? Like you have specialized in dermatology and now we are switching from dermat to internal medicine. So how did you think about that? So definitely I am a derma girl and I chose it because I love peace. It's a very specialized branch. You just concentrate on one aspect of your body organ. Mm -hmm. you You don't think wide in dermatology. But while pursuing USMLE, I came to know that USMLE is all about internal medicine. I had, right, to, right. I had to connect all the systems and then mm-hmm. I had to think a multidisciplinary mm-hmm. approach. So ultimately, while doing all the three steps, I started loving internal medicine. Mm-hmm. And I myself saw in the US healthcare system during my rotation how an internal medicine team works, integrating mm-hmm. all the aspects of a patient. So I decided to have an overall impact on patient's health and not just concentrating on one part of the organ. So I am, I'm loving it. (laughs) That's so great. Now you are like double specialized one from Dharma and one from internal medicine. You have been running a great page, Dr. Prachi from, from Dharma to I am Instagram page. I am a big fan of that as well. (laughs) Thank you, Alia. You inspired me to do that, by the way. Come on. (laughs) Okay, so was your residency here in India, like dermatology, helpful uh, during interviews or how did you sell your residency during interviews? Uh, Yeah, nice question. So every program director have different perspective of Mm -hmm. looking at your home country experience. So some of the program directors still loved hearing about dermatology and uh, why I'm transiting to internal medicine mm-hmm. but other program directors they had a question mark as to why are you doing that right why are you living such a superb mm-hmm. branch mm-hmm. so yeah i had to explain myself in both the ways and yeah the one who are very happy they were happy that i will contribute my domat knowledge even in their hospital because mm-hmm. you see most of the health hospitals in the united states they don't have a dermatologist so right. i can contribute myself and even in my usc like even in my rotation some of the doctors they asked my dermatology opinion in two to three patients mm-hmm. they were not knowing how to treat this patient wow. differently so i think i'll be able to impart or integrate both the uh, knowledge in treating any patient sounds so awesome so does residency here in India empower your CV? Not, see, what I felt is that mm-hmm. if you are doing same specialty residency, mm-hmm. it may be more helpful okay. than, rather than switching the specialty. Right. Yeah. So if you are so, just doing internal medicine here, that yeah, might exactly. uh, just... Yeah, uh, so, yeah, so if I'm applying to internal medicine and I have a IM home country residency, that can be added in the CV. Right. And where exactly you can add that in CV? Uh, we have to add it in the experiences. There is okay. no any separate column for home country residency. So we can add that in experiences in the ERAS application. Perfect. And uh, so coming to the USMLE exams and after you've done your residency, how mm-hmm. long did it take to prepare for our entire USMLE? Step one, two, three. So, yeah, for me, it was like I took entire two years, one year for each step one and step two. Mm-hmm. And then I did OET in just like 10 days and three and a half months of USC. And after that, after ERA's applic- uh, submission, I did my step three in one and a half months. Awesome. I am very curious yeah. about your step one to step two score jump. Can mm-hmm. you please tell us about that? Yeah, so definitely <laughs> step one was for me, entire USMLE journey was a learning phase. I uh-huh. was myself doing trial and error in each right. step. So step one was just an introduction to the MCQ system, the U world, of course, right. U world and everything and first aid. So I just changed my method of reading uh, right. and did more and more questions and MCQ in my step two, which helped me to improve my scores. But I awesome. think even they are not enough to get more interviews. <laughs> oh, come on. You have already got so many interviews and people are like dying to take you guys in a couple's match. We'll see that on 14th March. Yeah. All right, Dr. Prachi. So you have seen healthcare system of India as well as you have seen your seen the healthcare system there in the United States in rotation. So how would you compare those two? Uh, 
Oh uh, yeah, so I saw pros and cons in both the healthcare system. Like right. both have good points and bad points. Mm-hmm. I think the uh, US healthcare system was easy and more perfect, more systematic. Okay. And definitely, it was. I would give hundred percent from the patient side. Definitely, doctors have to work overwork in US healthcare system. Right. More more of documentation. Uh huh. But ultimately, it's beneficial. And one okay. difference which I found was that in India, we doctors we don't keep any records saved of the patient. Right. The patient himself he keeps everything, so he may lose it. So in my doma practice, whenever the patient comes for follow, I actually kept on searching for his documentation. Right. These all two to three. US records uh-huh. but in US healthcare system it was very easy to retrieve everything with just one click so i really found it very good <laughs> right and so they have like digitalized everything the electronic exactly. healthcare yeah, um, yeah. system and another thing about that is like they have continuity clinics which we don't find here in india so yeah. like kind of pre- uh, preventive yeah. healthcare is uh, exactly and Most. one good point about india is accessibility and availability like we can get drugs from any any pharmaceutical <laughs> shop we can go to any doctor which i found right. it was a little bit tough in united states we just have to link ourselves to any one pharmaceutical shop and one doctor we can't go anywhere else without reference but right. i think that's doable that's doable i mean that's not an issue right 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 <laughs> Yeah, but there's a still a big room of improvement for healthcare system in India. Definitely. But there's also something because we have to like uh, cater a larger amount of population as yeah. compared to US. So definitely. So that's something. So, yeah. So the patient doctor ratio has to be increased in India. Right. To match that kind of healthcare. What do you have to say about reservations in India? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so that's another reason why I want to leave this healthcare system because. right now the open people they are in minority <laughs> we have right. to find our space somewhere <laughs> right how do you think the residency is different here in india as compared to united states the work life balance uh, how much they are working and so the life of resident in nutshell well so they are poles apart uh, like in india if, like in any branch be it dermatology cool branch like dermatology ophthalmology mm-hmm. or medicine residency mm-hmm. is tough here So right. you don't get the work atmosphere over here like no one is helping a first year resident everyone is pulling his legs everyone right. want to work so he is overloaded but in united states i saw that r1 is the least loaded person mm-hmm. you know r3 is there to help him a second year helps him out and no one scolds him if he makes any mistake he gets two to three years of training mm-hmm. uh, he, he to adjust himself for residency whereas in india on the first day of your residency you are shown all the work all the patients and then r2 and r3 they just retire from all the <laughs> workload so it's really tough in india and there is no any defined uh, time limit for work hours in india right so even after you go home you get call you get night calls anytime anywhere but i love that in united states uh, after 6 to 6 no one calls you you are just free to do whatever you want so it it feels like a job mm-hmm. uh, you know in a very good hospital in united states the residency right. is, yeah it's not tough over there i think Right, right, right. So, Doctor Praji, can you tell us more about couples match? People are curious uh, about that. Yeah. So, couples match. It was uh, definitely tough for us because we had to make a lot many combinations for our rank order list. Not just primary number of interviews, but we had mm-hmm. to combine eight into eight, so sixty-four, and then no match. Right. We made eighty combinations in rank order wow. list. Yeah. So it was really tough. But we, I would like to say that I mentioned couples match. uh just this january mm-hmm. just before the rank order list opened not okay. during my era submission mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that helped us both to grab interviews individually and then we uh asked our programs to also fetch interviews to our spouse and if they loved their application they did uh, send the interviews to them so All overall right. it was good uh, it helped us to increase the number of interviews and then combine everything at the end right awesome so yeah. finally our uh, last um the trendiest uh, question so how can mm-hmm. you improve your cv <laughs> if you want yeah. to get into your cv definitely so what i experienced during my match process was that um, apart from cv score is the ultimate and the most important thing so please 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 work on your score uh, score will help you to fetch interviews and once you get your interview cv is a secondary thing then they will go into the cv so for cv definitely any number of research is good but don't do research at the cost of your steps uh, like do it in your free time or maybe weekend one to two over that right 
one to two research even that one research is enough to talk about in your interview and then definitely you can do some voluntary activity in your home country as well as in united states if possible mm-hmm. uh, and maybe or, and don't show any gap in your in work training. experience yeah. or even while you are preparing for your steps so awesome. yeah, that's very important <laughs> so score is more important than all other things you are yeah, doing exactly. yeah. and once you have got your scores and let's say you are not able to change your scores uh, what other thing you can do like contacts or something definitely <laughs> contacts <laughs> so yeah always make sure to stay in touch and stay connected with all the uh, ones who matched from your college from your region or from your town or uh, make mm-hmm. long lasting relations and definitely work on your work experience uh, resume and Uh, research publications also while you are doing rotating in united states start making contact um, like you should be noticed there even by us right. physicians right so yeah anyone can talk about can put in good words for you if you were good in your rotations that was a so concise answer so yeah. what are some of the last words like you assembly motivations uh, from you Uh, yeah so i would like to say that in entire us assembly journey there might be 100 reasons not to continue or not to pursue this this journey but just hold on one ultimate reason why you want to continue with this and remember that one reason and just pursue entire us assembly journey it may take 2 to 3 years but believe me it's worth at the end wow you will enjoy the process and you will evolve and i think you will be a completely different personality after your us assembly journey ends That's so inspiring. Thank you so much yeah. Dr. Prachi uh, for this yeah. entire session. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. I also enjoyed interacting with the Purva Popat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much Dr. Prachi. You are going to be the next US Assembly glamour. <laughs> Your blessings. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. And Thank you so much. For 14th and 18th March. Fingers I crossed. You match are you match into your best program. Your number 1. I wish for uh, I wish the same for you guys the couples Thank match. Thank you so much. Let's Thank hope for the so best. Much. Thank you. Have a nice day. By the way, uh, guys do check her uh, Instagram channel. Uh, that the name of that Instagram channel is USMLE Dom to Iron. Perfect. We'll leave a link uh, in the description below and if you have any questions about how to go about this couples match and everything please leave a comment on it and we'll try to address your answers. Thank you so much. Stay connected and thank you once again. Thank you so much.